All right, so um, we're going to debate evolution and whether humans and chimps share a common ancestor. Um, the reason this is a particularly important aspect of evolution because it's the aspect that Zabora has said is the thing that Islam is clear about didn't happen. And I think the evidence is clear that it did happen. So um, I'll just present a little bit of evidence. There's lots of it. We've got evidence from genetics, from paleontology, from archaeology, from biogeography, many fields of study. I'll, give, I'll just start with like one paper that's very important. It's this paper here. It was in Nature. It's the sequence of the chimpanzee genome. And um, it's done by the chimpanzee consortium, uh, genome sequencing consortium. And many of the world's leading genomic institutes signed off on this paper. And this is what they said. It said more than a century ago, Darwin and Huxley posited that humans share recent common ancestors with the African great apes. Modern molecular studies have spectacularly confirmed this prediction. So, you know, they, they don't usually have in science journals like quite such strong language. But the reason it's strong is because we really do have spectacular evidence for it. So let me give you just a couple of examples. Um, so there are genes that get duplicated, and when they get duplicated, they can malfunction. They can lose their original function, shall we say. And these are called pseudogenes. And if you look at uh, the chimp genome, there's, there's, many, there's many, many pseudogenes there. Just take one example, there's a uh, pseudogene called Nanog. And if you look at how many co pseudogene copies they have, the chimpanzee genome has 10 uh, pseudogenes of Nanog. So if you like, these are like shared errors. So imagine uh, someone hands you some homework, and then you, the teacher goes, hang on, I know that guy's older brother, and he handed he added in a very similar piece of homework two years ago. How would you know if you copied it? Well, if they had the same typos, you know, that would be very good evidence that it's been copied or they'd have the same, same source. And this is what we're talking about here. They've got the same errors in the same location. That's very hard to explain if evolution is not true, but if evolution is true, perfectly explained. Now, if you look, these are the, the nano pseudogenes. Okay, and one sec. Look, let me just finish this point, okay, and then come back, okay? Um, so you can see that they're at the same locations, same errors, but there's one nano pseudogene that humans have that chimps don't have. Okay, that is nano P8. Not present in the chimpanzee genome. Now, if evolution is true, there's one way to explain that. And that is, nano P8 must have become a pseudogene after we split with chimps. So now what we can do is use molecular clock technology and we can see if that's true. If evolution is true, that must be true. So they looked for that and this is what they said. Human nanog P gene is located on human chromosome 15. It is the most recent of the nanog process pseudogenes, exactly as evolution predicts. But evolution can make a more precise prediction because these pseudogenes, some of them are more than 100 million years old. They could be any age, really. But if evolution is true, nanog P8 must be younger than the human chimp split. And that's estimated to be about 6 million years ago. So we use molecular clock technology and we see how old it is. If evolution is true, it must not be older than 6 million years. And here's the estimate, here's the paper, it says it's between 0.9 and 2.5 million years old, just as evolution predicts. But we can go even further than that, because, because of that age, now we know that age, we can say this, oh, they've now sequenced the Neanderthal genome. And we can say, well, once we've got that genome sequence, when did Neanderthals and humans split from each other? And that answer is that between 400 and 700,000 years ago. So, if that's true, then it must be the case that nano P8 is in the Neanderthal genome. And we don't know this a priori. It might be true, it might not be true, but if evolution is true, if humans and chimps share a common ancestor, we should find nano P8 in the Neanderthal genome. And here's the paper. As you can see, nano P8 is present in the Neanderthal genome. So that's one piece of evidence. We can go, I've got loads more, but I don't know if you want to respond sure. to that. So, the position which I'm defending today is that human chimp ancestry 
it's been projected to the public like this is a fact, like this is true. And in the way that Phil just explained right now, that they have spectacular evidence that it's actually true. Now the case I'm going to be making is quite simple. It is that human chimp ancestry is not true literally. It is not a fact in the absolute sense, in the sense that it doesn't change and that it cannot be corrected due to future information. It is a uh, scientific hypothesis which is based on a probabilistic framework which has assumptions and there can be core disputes about it. Now, let's just go back to your first slide because you said a lot of things so, I want to deal with each yeah, one at yeah, a time, sure, right? Sure, so let's sure. go back to your first yeah. slide. Sure. And the way we're going to do this is that once he makes a point, then I'm going to address those points and then he can carry on make new points. Okay, go that's back. fine, yeah. There go, you go. First slide, oh, first sorry, slide. Sorry, yeah. First slide. Your first slide, your first slide. Oh, okay. Right. Like this, yeah. So just give me that for a second. Sure. So the first thing that Phil did, and I think this is very important, is that he basically said, this is the evidence for human chimp ancestry. He spoke about genetics, paleontology, archaeology, biogeography, right? Now these are different, different fields. Now the first point to make is any scientific conclusion in any scientific field can be revised based upon new information. So for example, you were mentioning about pseudogenes. Another piece of evidence which was used apart from pseudogenes was junk DNA. Junk DNA was used as evidence that we have um, natural selection uh, responsible for leaving behind um, all this extra junk. Natural selection, the way it works is it's a very wasteful process. It's a process which punishes for, um, you know, it, it, it rewards for a slight incremental advantage and it punishes for something which is wasteful. Now, when it actually comes to uh, junk DNA, we later on discovered that that wasn't actually junk, much of it was actually functional. So if you want to point at something in genetics, whether it's pseudogenes or junk DNA or something else, the same principle applies. The problem of induction is a reason why we can't say that it's absolutely true. Now about these particular fields, Thank you. so whether it's genetics, biochemistry, uh, linguistics, biogeography, anatomy or the fossil record, each of these, when it comes to human chimp ancestry, this is still based upon homology. Now homology is the assumption that similarities, whether at genetic or anatomical or biochemical level, are due to common ancestry. That is an assumption. Now for someone to say that it is a fact, what they're basically doing is, they're assuming that there is an argument to be made. Now the argument which is actually put forward goes like this and I want Phil to tell me whether he agrees with this argument. Similarities are due to common descent. Hey look, similarities exist. Therefore, we have evidence of human chimp ancestry or therefore we have evidence of um, uh, homology being true. Do you agree with this argument? No, of course not. You don't? No, no, no one in evolutionary biology thinks that. Right? Okay. That's just ridiculous. So you don't believe it's a fact then? No, I. I believe human chimp common ancestry is a fact, but it's not a fact just because humans and chimps are similar. No one, no one is saying. That's fine. Right? No one is saying because they're similar, therefore they have a common ancestry. Sure. So the odd In fact, if you look, if you listen to what I said, we're actually looking at the dissimilarities as well as the similarities. Sure. There are subtle patterns between similarities and dissimilarities. So if you take nano P8, nano P8 is not in the chimp genome, right? We don't, right? So we're not just talking about similarities. We're talking about the dissimilarities as well. But there are consequences of the similarities and the dissimilarities. There, what, the way you assess this is, is the theory makes a number of precise predictions and then uh, uh, using very um, parsimonious assumptions. Yep. Then again and again, if you keep finding that the predictions are found by the evidence, um, then, then you say that theory is true, okay? Now, wait, 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 you say, wait. Hang, on, hang, on, hang on, let me just go. I, I want to come no, to what no, you no, said. No, hang on, no, I want to address what you said. Sure, sure, but I asked a particular question, okay. which is, I summarized what you said there yeah. in an argument. I want you to tell me whether this argument's correct or it's incorrect. Okay. If I understood what you said correct, then maybe I misunderstood you. But what I, as I understood. Do you want me to repeat the argument? No. 
Okay, okay. sure. Now, well, so, I'll say what I understood of you to be saying. You were saying that it was based on an assumption of homology, yeah? And that's false. That's not true at all. Okay? Okay. Let me, let me tell so you So human chimpanzee is not based on homology? It's not based on an assumption of homology. It's not based on the assumption of homology. Correct. Okay. So it's based off of evidence. Sure. So, t so, okay. so tell me we this. We don't start with the assumption We're of homology and then conclude homology. Okay. Of course not. Okay. Right? So here's the thing. When you go out in the world and you look yeah. for a genetic similarity between humans and chimps, yeah. or an anatomical similarity, or a similarity... Or a dissimilarity, we're talking... Whatever. About, yeah. What are you basically looking for? Okay, we're looking for evidence of common descent. Based on? Based on the predictions that that theory makes. And what's the predictions? Okay, a pred I just gave some predictions. Sure. Right? Which, so, okay. which is, which so, is okay, homology. Okay. okay. No, 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 no. Homology is the conclusion. It's not. No, no, no. Homology not. is an assumption. Okay. No, it isn't. Okay. Let me let me just explain to you why it isn't. Okay. Sure. Right. Okay. Because we have we have some traits that are similar because of homology. Right. We also have some traits that are not due to homology. Fine. This is convergent evolution. Yeah, homoplasy is the cladistic term, but a more general term would be convergent evolution. But there's a difference right? between these two terms. Okay, so. but the point is the same, right? No, no, it's not. How is it different? Okay, so when you have convergent evolution, you yeah. are assuming that that, th that common ancestry is actually true, right? Well, okay, I mean, yes. So, when it comes to the initial point which I made, which is that you begin off with an assumption and that assumption is an assumption of homology and then you look for similarities or dissimilarities. You're saying homology is a conclusion. I'm saying homology is an assumption. Now, okay. I'll give you evidence why it is actually an assumption and not a conclusion. Erasmus Darwin, Darwin's grandfather, he believed human chimpanzee history. He yeah. believed in it, okay? Yeah. Now, what was his evidence for human chimpanzee history? I wouldn't have thought he had any evidence for human chimpanzee. I didn't know Erasmus said that, but maybe he did. I don't know. Okay. But I wouldn't have thought Erasmus he had did... much evidence. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. Now, going back to the Enlightenment and many yeah. of the thinkers of the Enlightenment, just like Erasmus, yeah. they believed in human chimpanzee history true, uh, to be true as well. And this goes all the way back approximately 3,000 years to the ancient Indian philosophers in the Indus Valley. All of these people, including the Greeks, the early Greeks as well, they believed in human chimp ancestry as well, human primate ancestry. This was based on the assumption of homology. Now what Darwin did is he came along and he put fuel on the fire by giving them a mechanism, a mechanism by which you can have transformation. So homology is an assumption and for that assumption, for human, wait one second, human chimp ancestry, for it to be taken as true, you need to have an argument. The best argument that you've given me so far, I've summarized, and you need to tell me whether you disagree with the premises or whether you disagree the premises okay. leading to the conclusion. Okay, okay, okay. So let me, let me repeat it for okay. the benefit. Well, one last thing. One, let me okay. repeat it for the benefit of the crowd here. Similarities are due to common ancestry. That's an assumption. Hey, look, similarities exist, whether it's a pseudogene, whether it's something in genetics, whether it's something in linguistics or whatever. Therefore, common ancestry is true. I want you to tell me, do you disagree with the premises or the conclusion? Okay, what I would say is I disagree with your premises. Okay, you don't start. I sure. mean, there, there may have been people that so, thought. That, hang on, here, let me finish. Sure, sure, you so, spoke and sure, sure, I didn't sorry. Interrupt you, okay, right. So it's certainly true there are people that thought human chimp common ancestry were true before we have the evidence. That's true. Okay, but when you go and do the genetic tests, right? When you do the genetic test, you don't know what the answer is. The genetic tests give you an answer though. Okay, so you can go in there, oh, doing that wrong. experiment, you can do that experiment without any presupposition about whether human and chimps have a common ancestor or whether they don't. So if you give, take the example that I gave, notice that Sabor did not really counter any of the evidence I, I did. actually presented. Hang on, please don't interrupt, right? Okay. I said if evolution is true, then we should find that nano P8 is the youngest of all the nano P nano pseudo genes. Which is homology. Okay. But, but homology doesn't tell you which of those nano genes are, are the youngest, does it? Yeah, but you're using homology. But it doesn't tell you which are the youngest. It okay. doesn't tell you a date. Look, does it? Phil, you're making an argument which is that genetics 
has given us something new. It's not me giving the argument. This is what this is no, what all of the people on the Chimpanzee Genome Consortium said. Okay, this is don't make this about me, right? But okay, this is this your interpretation is what, of what they're saying. Okay, well, this I mean, it's damn clear what okay, they said. So, okay, so Phil, tell me this. Spectacularly confirmed. Sure. So that's what they okay, said. Okay, okay, that's okay. Not, that's not what they right. said. Go now, now, hang on. You see, is what they said. Okay, one, sorry. one second. One I'm sorry. Second. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it back up. Just so you can, you tell me what they. You read that out. Read, hang on. Read that out. Where it says more than a century ago. Where, what paper is this? This is, I told you, initial sequence of the chimpanzee genome in comparison with... And the what is that? Genome. What is that? Comparison, which is homology. Yeah, but you're comparing, you're comparing to see whether homology is true or not. You know, and the data could come back not, couldn't it? Yeah, but hang on but a right, second. Is it, is it true or false that the data could come back and say not homology? You, you put the cart before the horse. Let me explain no, what... Okay, let me just explain what's going on here. When you go out and look in the world, yeah. there's no such thing as looking at scientific evidence, observations, and then coming up with a hypothesis. That doesn't exist. What? You don't go out in the world, look for observations, and come up with a scientific hypothesis. Really? No. What you do is you start off with a hypothesis, and then you go out and look for evidence. It goes both ways, but that's if okay, you well, find I so give you example, Darwin, Darwin himself, what he basically said is this. He said, if science doesn't proceed by beginning off with a hypothesis and then looking for evidence, then you might as well go to a quarry and count pebbles. Now, this issue is a, is a well understood problem in the philosophy of science that you have the theory ladenness of observation because of this issue. Now, when you are doing a study like this and you say we've come to a conclusion, that conclusion starts off with an assumption as it does in the title of the paper, which is the assumption of homology, comparison. Yeah, that's not well, in one the title of the paper at all, that's false. Comparison. Com they're comparing. So comparing they're what? What are they comparing? Me and the tree or are they comparing they're humans comparing and chimps? comparing humans and chimps. Which is homology. No. That's no. not homology? No, it isn't. Because homology is, okay, let's explain to those people that aren't familiar, right? Homology is defined, well, it's, the definition of homology has changed over time, okay? So before it was just similarity, okay? Now we think it's similarity due to common descent. That's how the homology is okay. generally understood. No, that's not let quite true. Finish, let me finish, right? Okay? But th this, this is the important point. The important Every point. Every point's important. <laughs> no, 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 because some are trivial, right? Someone, someone less true. Okay, sure. right. So the point is, there's nothing in the title of the paper that, that says anything about homology. What? Okay? Read the title again. Initial sequence of the chimpanzee genome and comparison. With comparison. The human comparison right. of so genomes is homology. Okay. No, it's not. Because you're, you're, you're comparing why. to. Why. If if they're homologous, then we look to see. Let, take the example I gave. We look to see, if they're homologous, then nano P8 should be the youngest of the pseudogenes. Yep. We don't know that ahead of time. Yep. We do molecular clock data, yep. and then we see, is it homologous or is it not homologous? Yep. Okay? It's not decided ahead of time. Yeah, now, but the assumption course, is there though. Okay, yes, the assumption is there. I don't yeah, disagree yeah. with that. And that the assumption, assumption is there. so you but, previously said it's a conclusion or an assumption. No, 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 I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you're misconstruing what I'm saying. No? What I'm saying is, is that you don't, you don't come, you don't just derive homology from an assumption of homology. What I said that was... That doesn't make any sense though. What I said was, is that you, you derive common ancestry from the evidence, not from the assumption of common ancestry. Okay, so... so okay? okay? I'm not saying no one ever assumed okay. there was sure, common sure. ancestry. Sure, sure, sure. Okay? Let, Obviously they did. Let's delve down right. to genetics. Okay. Do you think genetics gives evidence for human chimp ancestry to be true literally? Well, it depends what you mean by true, literally. Forget okay? that. Do you think it's evidence? Yes, of course Apart it is. from homology? It's, it's spectacularly... Okay, so tell evidence. me this. Is that anything apart from homology? Is genetics, has it taught us anything apart from homology? Well, of course, genetics taught us lots of things. In terms of human chimp ancestry? In terms of human chimp ancestry, what it's taught us is that humans and chimps share a common ancestor. No, that's actually right? incorrect. Let me give you evidence for that. No, no, it's not incorrect. Let me, let me give you evidence that for that. That is exactly what no, all the people in the field no, say, no, and that's what the evidence no, points that, to. That's not actually true. Let me, give you, true. let me give you evidence. Okay. This is the same problem that Aaron Ra came up with, okay, right? He, he thought genetics was something different to homology. 
yeah. right? Like it brought something new in. But you have to put it this way. A scientist walks into a lab. Yeah. He walks in with a certain assumptions. And one of the assumptions is that of homology. That is a given assumption before you even enter the lab, right? Now that assumption does not change because of something you observe. It is still an assumption. Yeah, yeah, but you can invalidate the assumption by your observations. If nano PA was not the youngest of the pseudogenes, right, that would be evidence against the assumptions of common ancestry, okay, would no, it not? No, no, Do you agree okay, or disagree? Let me, let me, no, let me, no, no, answer that. Do you agree let, or disagree? Well, what day of the week is it, yes or no? Let me break down your no, question. No, no. Let me I break down you your question. I'm asking a very serious question. If, if it turned out that nano PA was not the youngest of the pseudogenes, if it was 100 million years old, that would be very strong evidence against human trope common ancestry, there is, would it not? No, it wouldn't. Why not? I'll tell you why. Right, tell because why. homology, the idea that humans are, they did not come in the history of the world uh, by themselves, de novo. They are linked to something else, primates or whatever. This is a basic assumption in science. And there is no piece of evidence that can go against that. How is that? How would that be? How would that not be evidence against it? You haven't no, explained anything. You've no, just stated No, no. But let me explain why. Okay, go ahead. And this is linked to my previous point, which I was about to make about go genetics. On. So science begins off with methodological naturalism, which is the idea that anything that we look at, we are going to assume there is a natural explanation for it. So when you look at me and you, a blade of grass or Lady Gaga, they're going to assume we're going to have a naturalistic explanation for this. Correct? Do you agree with me so far? I, I, I think the answer to that is complicated, so I'll, you carry on. Okay, but I'm going to make a blanket statement, you can challenge it afterwards, which is... Okay, go on. That is the very crux of the scientific method, methodological naturalism. So, methodological naturalism means that anything a scientist or evolutionary biologist studies, they're going to assume that they have a natural explanation. Because of that, human beings and chimpanzees, or human beings or something, if, if chimpanzees or primates didn't exist, right? If something else existed, which was, I don't know, whatever, pigs, whatever, right? We would always be linked to something which is non-human simply because of that assumption of methodological naturalism. So there is no piece of evidence which can go against that foundational assumption of science. Okay, now, now let me, totally let me, disagree. Okay, fine, that's fine. Yeah. Let me make one more point, which right, is right. this. You're saying genetics has added something new, which is exactly what Aaron Ra was saying, which is why I'm disagreeing with both of you at the moment. Genetics, all it tells you is that you have this particular field, just like all the rest of the fields, in which you have an assumption of homology. That's all you actually have. Now, let, let, me, let me give you some evidence for this. Jonathan Marx, he's an atheist evolutionary biologist, and you can check this out yourself. He believes human chimp ancestry is true. He is an atheist. So for him, foundationally, human beings have to be linked to something else in life. Yet he, in his book, which is published by Oxford University, called uh, Evolutionary Anthropology, A New Introduction, right? an alternative introduction. He says about homology, he says, what has genetic, what is, what is genetics actually taught us from the, from the time of Linnaeus, which is prior Darwin, in terms of genetics? He says absolutely nothing. It can give us new information, but it doesn't change the foundational assumption of homology. Homology is an assumption, and genetics doesn't make it into a conclusion. It is still an assumption, and it will remain an assumption, whether you bring out your evidence from genetics, or anatomy, or biochemistry, or the fossil record, or linguistics. Okay. So let me, let me respond. I think what Mr. Boyle is saying is completely and utterly false. We don't have to assume on naturalism that humans are related to chimps, and I'll explain why. Because there was a popular belief, goes back to the ancient Greeks, uh, I think it was Anaxagoras that came up with it, and it was only disproved, actually same year, I think as the origin, I think it was 1859, right? Called spontaneous creation. Aristotle believed in this, okay? And it was popular up until the 19th century, where it was considered that species spontaneously were created, you know, out of non-living matter, right? So on that, now that's a perfect, that can be a perfectly naturalistic scenario, okay? You don't have to believe in God to believe in separate creation. You could have a naturalistic separate creation for all the different species, okay? So there's nothing at all about naturalism that forces you into a conclusion that humans and chimps have to be related. They don't have to okay, be related. Okay, what, what? Hang on, let me finish. Sure, the point. sure. They don't have to be related 
based off of um, naturalism. Okay? okay. So naturalism doesn't point force you into that conclusion. Sure. But what forces you into the conclusion is the evidence. Okay? That evidence, now notice that Sabor has not really said any specific problem with the evidence other than a general criticism that it's based off of naturalism. But as we've seen... No, no, because of I said naturalism and then homology. Okay, but again, again, you don't have to assume from the outset. You can do a test. The test will tell you. You, that, you could say, I start off with the assumption humans and chips are not related. And then I will look at, you could, you could do that. Okay, right? so tell me. You don't have to okay, assume so, that. So, 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 right? so, so tell in me this. In fact, in fact, just to show you how wrong you are, some of, uh, when uh, the first people started looking for hominid fossils, right, um, they didn't necessarily assume it was with chips. Okay, some people thought that the orangutan was the closest. Which right? is, and yeah. so, now of course I accepted that, that that would be a naturalistic... And that that's homology too. But, but my point is, the evidence can check whatever your assumption you start with, right? The evidence can then update okay. what you start with, so, right? So, so the evidence could could contradict what your belief that humans and chimps share a common ancestry. Okay, it could easily okay, okay, do okay, sure, so. sure. You make, and, you make two, and, three and, points and, I need to address okay, them now. Okay, so let so me just you, you admit that it does start off with an assumption. Okay, what I'm saying Previously is... Previously you no, didn't no, do that. No, no, okay, what I'm saying is, you don't have to start with any assumption. That's fine, but you okay. just admitted right now that you do start with an assumption of homology. Okay, okay. When you say you, what do you mean by you? As in, as an evolutionary biologist, or a naturalist, or somebody that's looking at this, you start off with the assumption of homology. Okay. If you're an evolutionary biologist, then you will believe in homology. Fantastic. However... however and will you start you off with it? Will you, you start off with it? If you start, okay, well, you, it depends what you mean, right? Okay. Let, let, let me finish, let me, let me answer that point. You don't have to start off with this. If you're an evolutionary biologist, you don't have to start with the assumption that humans and chimps share a common, recent, most recent common ancestor. Okay. Do you? Do you agree with that? No, 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 I don't. You don't agree no, with that? No, I don't agree with that. Because for the first, Okay, you made two, three points. And also, as a naturalist, okay, no, but, you don't have to even believe in evolution. Okay, but you, right? you've said two, three points which are unrelated, so I need to okay. dissect each one okay, at a point. Okay, okay. okay, so firstly, when you said, as a scientist, you don't need to start off with methodological naturalism, that's... Okay. No, no, I didn't say that. What I said was, if you if you believe in naturalism, you don't have to believe in evolution. You could believe in spontaneous creation. That's, that's not a, that's not a point I made, though. That's no, a red it herring. Is a point, it is, because what you said, what you said was that if you if you're a naturalist, if you start with methodological naturalism, you have to believe that we have some kind of common ancestry with other animals. That's what you said, and that statement is false. Because you're making a few points, I'm now to make take notes. <laughs> That's fine. Sorry. That's yeah, go on. Fine. Okay. So my point was, you said that as long as you're a naturalist, you have to believe that we share common ancestry with other animals. That you have to believe that, yeah. right? And that's false. You have you, you have to believe you, have to, you believe have to believe in some naturalistic beginning of a human being, right? Yeah, but it doesn't have to be with common ancestry with with other apes, does it? Yeah, it but doesn't that, have to have common yeah. ancestry with chimps. So yeah, you don't but, have but, to but, have but that, any of But that's that the most. All. But that's the most popular view. Because the evidence no, has no, no, directed no, no, no. us that way. It wasn't always I'll the most popular view. Okay, so two two points here. So, what would you say? about somebody who says that um, all you need is cause, cause, all you need in terms of evidence yeah. uh, so all you need in terms of a beginning is just the first sort of spark the first sort of luck and from that you can explain a purely naturalistic story of all human beings basically having a common ancestor right what do you think of that idea well, you'd need to back each idea needs to be backed up with evidence. Sure, sure. Right? Okay, now. And in terms of human chimp common ancestry, we have overwhelming evidence for that. We have multiple it, independent lines of evidence. And let me. And just that's make, all based okay. on ho the assumption of homology. That's the point I'm making. No, no, the, no. That's the whole point. You you say it's based off the assumption of homology, and that is just completely and utterly false. Okay. Right. Now, that's not to say that people don't have assumptions of homology, but the evidence, the tests, they are not based off an assumption of homology. They are independent of what you start off with your assumptions. You could assume, if you went into that lab, and assumed that human and chimps were not 
sharing comment. Sure. Can I have your glasses you, for a second? Can you have my watch? Glasses. I'm going to demonstrate a point. Okay. Okay. Do you mind if I wear them? Okay. So let me just wear your glasses for a second. I want you to tell me something, right? Yeah. So I'm wearing your glasses right now. Yeah. Since I'm wearing your glasses, yeah. am I affected by the lens? Yeah, I would have so. And wherever I go, is this lens going to be all-encompassing in terms of what I see? That's what it was. Um, well, it depends what you mean by see. If you mean visually, because people use seeing as perception, right? Yeah. It just, in terms Which of what, is what you it see, is. No, no, but hearing is perception, you know. There's a touch is perception. So in terms of your visual outlook, of course it's going through the lens, yes, of course. Okay, fine. Yes. Good. Now, as a scientist, the point which I'm making is whatever field you look at, whether you are a biochemist, a geneticist, an ana anatomist, linguist, uh, evolutionary psychologist, you have the assumption of methodological naturalism and the assumption of homology. And that assumption is not something you can put aside and look at the evidence independently because that's not the way that science works. That's the point I was making. Okay, can I, can I respond? Right. Okay, so you can, t the whole point is you can test your assumptions, right? You can do, you can collect data and see if your assumptions are correct or incorrect. So again, if you look at the genetic data, and you say, okay, if evolution is true, nano PA must be the youngest of all the pseudogenes. Now that data comes back to you, okay, what, gives what, you an answer, what, and it doesn't depend on what you started with. Okay, fine, okay? fine, fine. Let, let's, You'll let, have to explain how it is. Is it just coincidence that nano PA is the youngest okay, pseudogene? So, Tell me why. Why, you, if evolution okay, is sure, not true, sure, sure. why is it? Let me. Why let, is it that we share? the same mistakes in the same location and then with the one no. that we don't have happens to be okay. dated before the split okay. so, just like evolution so, would so, predict so, so, tell me how that happened let's do some counterfactuals okay so you understand my point okay if they make an assumption that something is going to be there and it is there or if something's going to be there and it's not there yeah it doesn't make a difference to the uh, assumption of homology and it doesn't make a difference to the overall epistemic weighing of human chimpanzee ancestry. That's the point I was making. I'll give you some evidence for this. Okay, go ahead. So, we in, hu we in chimps are supposed to have a recent common ancestor. Yep. So, why is it that if, if somebody was to use the assumption of homology and then go ahead, why is it that the closest to us in human behavior is not actually the chimpanzee, is actually the ant. Ants have warfare, ants have economics, ants have actually uh, uh, battle... Also well, have oh, 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 hang on, hang on one, second, one second. Sociologically, according to evolutionary biologists, the closest thing to human beings is actually the ant. And there's a book on this, um, uh, E.O. Wilson's uh, The Social Conquest of the Earth, right? And there's other evolutionary, atheist evolutionary biologists who've admitted the closest to the human being in terms of our social capabilities is the ant. The closest to human beings in terms of our intellectual capabilities is actually the crow, right? Now, that, those observations which go against uh, the uh, sort of uh, a priori sort of if some before looking at the evidence if someone was to assume if homology is true then this would be true those haven't changed at all the epistemic weighing of human chimp ancestry those dissimilarities why haven't they because the assumption that you begin with is always going to remain an assumption and the similarities that you see you're going to say are due to common ancestry the dissimilarities you see you're going to see you're going to say are due to homoplasy there is no piece of evidence that can undermine that okay all right so first off the statement that humans and ants are the most similar um, sociologically all you, all you said was that because they have let me just see what was the evidence for that they have warfare okay let me give you so, some so one, one at a time one at a time one that was warfare correct okay well, correct well, I, I gave, right, I, and, gave and, I gave you, I gave you. Also have uh, warfare, uh, uh, so that seems like pretty weak. Okay, 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 to okay, me. okay, okay. What was the next one? Okay, one second, one second. So let me explain how sociology works. I think you've made a misrepresentation here. Of course, they both have warfare. Right. Except in ant colonies, and this isn't according to me. This is according to the evolutionary biologists who study this. In ant colonies, you have 
massive warfare where millions of ants go out and they fight. And not only do they go out and fight, you actually have ants which go out and apply medicine to the ants which are actually injured. Now the complex level of warfare that ants have is totally different to human, uh, to, to chimp warfare. Now when it comes to uh, human and chimp uh, being similar in terms of the sociological behavior and humans and uh, ants actually being closer than humans and chimps. This is not something I've said. This is something evolutionary biologists have come to the conclusion of. And of course, those conclusions can be revised based on new data, but that's the conclusion that they've actually come to. Now, Henry Gee, he's a uh, atheist evolutionary biologist. He's yeah? not an atheist, you're wrong. He is an atheist. No, he isn't. He... I've got a quote from you directly. Okay. He's, you're wrong. He is an atheist evolutionary no, biologist. He he's isn't. based here. Okay, we you're can wrong. deal with whether he's an atheist or not later. <laughs> okay. Let's deal with his point okay, here. Fine, his fine. point here is this. Yeah. In his book, An Accidental Species, talking yeah. about us, yeah. he writes in that book that humans and ants are the closest sociologically. And he's the senior editor of Nature. No, he isn't. He's not the senior editor of Nature? No. Henry Gee? Correct. Okay. I'll tell you why. Because Nature doesn't have a senior editor. It has a whole bunch of senior editors. Okay? <laughs> and you're misquoting him. Let me let me give you a quote from Henry Gee. Okay? Wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Okay. What about the point I just made? Okay, I'll respond. Let me respond. Okay? Let me respond. Okay, first you've been off, You've been jumping around a lot. Okay, well, so are you. Right. Okay. No, I refuse your points okay. and jump no, you on. You jump you on without being, without addressing my points. You haven't Can I wear your glasses again? Because until okay. you, until no, you show me okay. homology, <laughs> until you, okay. until let me respond. Uh, uh, support, uh, uh, let me respond. You can there you go. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so these are the assumptions of homology, and once he shows me that scientists don't have this assumption, I'll take them off. Okay. First off, he doesn't need your help. Okay. All right. Okay. First. Off, I don't need your help. So first off, Sabor is wrong about Henry G being an atheist. This Henry Gee. Henry Gee. Sorry. This is his, this is a direct quote from him. I am with the scientists of an earlier age who found that their motivation in advancing the cause of knowledge was to magnify the name of the Creator. Okay? So that was in nature, that was that was his own words, right? He also says, right, he never he never disputes that humans and chimps share a common ancestor. He agrees with that. Yeah, I know. Right? I never said so, he doesn't. So okay, so right, and he also agrees that the fossil evidence supports evolution. Agreed? He, yeah, based on the assumption of homology. No, it's not based on the assumption of homology. It is based off of the evidence that we actually can I have. See, can I see Let's your just quote? Go, right, hang on, hang on. Can, I see that, can I see that quote? Yeah, sure, go ahead. You can, there's the source. Check it. Doesn't necessarily prove he was a theist. No, 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 agreed, agreed. It was one point at a time, right? One point at a time. In another place, he right. said he's an atheist. Well, that's the, that's what I have. I mean, and, and that that is not clear. That's not clear. Give, give me your quote that says he's an atheist. Well, I don't have it with me right now. Well, but listen, well, well, that, is you why, why, that is why. Well, I Well, you want me to memorize every single no, person? No, no. So and why well, why I atheist? suggested the debate that we had. Yeah. What I suggested the debate we did initially was that we would swap our statements ahead of time because then we can check who's misquoting and who's okay, not. Okay, but him being an and atheist. You didn't want to do wait, that. Wait, wait, hang on a second. You didn't want to do that because you said it would be boring. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Well, Phil, look. Whether Henry Gee is an atheist or he's not an atheist, okay. how right. on earth does that change our conversation? No, I'm just saying, no, I agree, I agree. I'm coming to the next point, right? The point, the point is... You need Henry to address Gee, these glasses. Okay, Henry Gee, right, agrees okay. that humans and chimps share a common ancestor. He agrees that the fossil... Based evidence, on homology. No, where does he say it's based off homology? He says it's based off of the evidence. If you look at Henry Gee yeah. and all of evolutionary biologists, including philosophers of biology, they all have said the same thing, which I is do. that we have the assumption of homology really? in our field. And this isn't just about one guy said this or another guy said this. Look, I want you to tell me something, right? If there is a book which is published by, say, a reputable publisher, yeah. which has an atheist philosopher of science or an atheist evolutionary biologist who says a particular thing and then you come here and you say something else different then should I go with what I have in front of me or should I go with what you have? You should go with the evidence, that's what you should go with. And the evidence is that when okay, people... This is a quote from Henry Gee, let me read it out to you, okay? They, they had the 150th anniversary of the publication of The Origin of Species and Henry Gee 
organized um, or he, he wrote this about if they had this thing to celebrate that in nature okay and this is what Henry Gee said the articles in this insight testify to the success of Charles Darwin's theory of descent with modification by means of natural selection carefully detailed in his book on the origin of species almost 150 years ago the most striking aspect of the theory is its simplicity given heritable variation the superabundance of offspring and environmental change natural selection must happen and evolution will follow so he says the assumptions are genetic heritability variation yeah superabundance of offspring yeah and environmental change that's yeah. it that's the three things that he says he In never says term. based off the assumption of homology so he says based off those three assumptions wait wait, wait. Right? hang on hang on hang on a second and also he says he says this let me give you one more quote from henry Gage. darwin would have been safe darwin would have been safe okay here. sorry um change batteries on the camera Okay, so this is another quote from Henry Gee in The Accidental Species, a very book that Sabor quotes. He says, Darwin would have been safe had no fossils ever been discovered. It remains the case, however, that fossils provide direct evidence of evolutionary change in our past. So okay? where does it say he doesn't have the assumption of homology? Well, where does it uh, where Here, where he says that natural selection, evolution follows from three things. Heritable variation, Yep. Selection, a superabundance of offspring and environmental change. Okay, now what you've right? done is you, you've actually committed a fallacy now. Go on. You've yeah. committed the fallacy of equivocation. We are speaking about homology and he's speaking about natural selection. Now, homology is a necessary condition for human chimp ancestry to be true, but it's not a sufficient condition. For it to be sufficient, you need a mechanism. And a mechanism in terms of science can never be proven because of the inductive nature of science. Now what you've done there is you've said he is assuming these things, but those are the assumptions of natural selection. Now, Henry Gee and any other evolutionary biologist in the world, they do actually believe in the assumption of homology and they also prior to that have the assumption of methodological naturalism. Now, Elliot Sober, who is an atheist, again, evolutionary biologist, if you know just me, he's an atheist, we can deal with that too. He's an atheist evolutionary biologist in his book, Evidence and Evolution, which is yeah. published by Oxford, uh, by Cambridge University. He says, the idea that humans and chimps must share a common ancestor because they're so similar and humans and mushrooms must share, uh, must have independent ancestry because they're so different. They're both naive because within a probabilistic framework, there is no must. And he goes on in that same very book speaking about homology, homoplasy and the ad hoc rationalizations which do actually exist in the field of evolutionary biology. You're no, no, wait, wait, hang on one second, one second. So I, what I want you to do is this. I want you to show me that scientists don't begin off with the assumption of homology. Don't take a word of a scientist out of context. I want you to show me as a field, they don't begin off with the assumption of homology. And two, I want you to show me how it's possible to have a, a conversation about homology without speaking about the mechanism because if you can show all the similarities between humans and chimps, humans and pigs, humans and whatever, if there is no mechanism of transformation, all you have is a story. Which is why, and this is the last point I'm going to make, you can try and refute all these points. Human chimp ancestry was something which the ancient Greeks believed in, the ancient Hindus believed in, the, the, the Enlightenment uh, Victorian thinkers also believed in, including Darwin and his grandfather. The reason why this idea took off is because Darwin gave a mechanism, the mechanism of natural selection. If the mechanism breaks, or if the mechanism is shown to be insufficient, you cannot claim human chimp ancestry is true. Okay. Because without the mechanism, it's like you have a bridge and you have two foundations, the foundations break and you want to cross the bridge. You cannot. Darwin's theory is not a theory about similarity, it's a similarity, it's a, it's a theory about natural selection leading A to Z. Okay, 
All right, so what Sabor did was totally and utterly misquote Elliot Sober. Okay, so what he said was true that Elliot Sober says you can't just look at similarities and then derive common ancestry. That's naive, and I agree with that. I agree with that right from the start, right? But what Elliot Sober no, goes on to say, don't interrupt, what he goes on to say was, and this is a direct quote, you can look this up in that very book. The torpedo shape found in sharks and dolphins does not provide strong evidence for their having common ancestor, for common ancestor. Natural selection favours this shape in large aquatic predators, so we'd expect it to be present in modern sharks and dolphins regardless of whether they have a common ancestor. In contrast, the gill slits found on human embryos and in many fish are evidence of a common ancestor precisely because they have no adaptive utility in human embryos. The term vestigial, vestigial carries the double meaning that Darwin intended, intended. Vestigial traits are useless to the organism and they are vestiges of a bygone age. By recognizing they are useless, we see they provide substantial information about the past. Now this is the point. It's true that you can't just look at similarities and then say, right, that's down to common ancestry, that's homology. You have to do things that are more sophisticated than that. Let me give you another piece of evidence to show you how this is done. Okay? So let me go back to my little presentation here. Okay? So let's um, let's go to something called Amino acid function. Wait, 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 hang on. No, no, let, no, no, let's let's stick to Elliot Sober's point. Because yeah. I don't want you to make a point and move on. No, no, How no, 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 That's a separate hang on, point. Hang on. No, I'm this here, listen, point. listen. I'm here all day. Let's deal with that point. How does that well, undermine... I'm not here all day. Well, I am. Okay. So, so, how does that undermine the point which I made about him? Because, okay, because you misquoted Elliot Sober. How? What you, you misquoted him because how? what Elliot Sober said was you can't just look at similarities and then say, okay, that's down to common ancestry. And I agree with that. No, no, but that's what not... he said afterwards was that if you look at similarities in functional things, that might be down to common ancestry, might not be. But if you look at similarities in non-functional things, then you can conclude common ancestry. Street. That's what Elliot Sober says. Elliot Sober is very clear. Okay, you can okay. conclude wait, wait, common ancestry. Hang, hang on, hang on and you're second. quoting him to say hang that on. you can't. It's a really strange situation where somebody says you are misquoting this person and then when they are explaining how you're misquoting that person, they misquote them themselves. How did I misquote him? Here's exactly what Elliot Sober said. He said the idea that humans and chimpanzees have a common ancestor, it, it's, it, the idea that they must have a common ancestor because they're so similar, and the idea that humans and mushrooms must have independent ancestry because they're so different, both of these are naive because they are based on a probabilistic framework and within a probabilistic framework, there is no must in either case. He is describing homology as an assumption and that assumption of homology fits into a probabilistic framework which also has other assumptions such as a mechanism of natural selection which also has other assumptions such as gradualism and vertical gene transfer and so on and so on. So what I said there, he did not undermine but what he's describing later. Elliot Sober, what he's basically saying is that you cannot claim human chimp ancestry is true, literally is a must because it's still based on a probabilistic framework, which is exactly what I was saying. Okay, okay, let me respond, let me respond, right? What Sober is saying is that you can't just look at the similarities and conclude common ancestry. I totally agree with that, no one is doing that. Let me show you how we do this, okay? Here's another piece of evidence, okay? This is called amino acid functional redundancy. So if you look at amino acid sequences, right, you can have different amino acid sequences give you the same functional protein. It's a bit like, imagine if you get dealt at some cards, right? Imagine you get dealt four aces. Okay, you got, I've got a strong hand here, right? It doesn't matter what order the aces are in, does it? It doesn't matter whether you've got the ace of diamonds first or the ace of spades, it makes no difference, right? So similarly, in proteins, 
you can have different sequences of amino acids give you the same functional protein. Okay? So there are proteins called ubiquitous proteins that are shared throughout all living things. So an example is something called cytochrome C. Okay? So in cytochrome C you can have different amino acids and they will have the same function. How do we know this? Because genetic engineers have actually taken the cytochrome C of humans, which has a different amino acid sequence, put it in yeast and found it works just as well. Okay? So there's no reason for the amino acid sequence to be the same unless I have common ancestry. So here is a table comparing amino acid sequences, right, of different species. And what you see, what you homology. see, what you see is that the humans and chimps, see, the amino acid sequence of cytochrome C is absolutely identical. Not a single difference. I think you can just uh, not turn it on the camera. Yeah. Now, as you go to other species, mammal, other mammals, they're pretty similar, but not identical. And what evolution would predict is they get less and less similar as you go to less and less related species. So if you go to yeast, you see very okay, little wait, wait, similarity. Hang on, hang on, let me finish. You're making, no, let me finish, right? Now, the point, and it's the point that Elliot Sober himself makes, is that if you look at something that's functional, if you just looked at, oh, are the proteins similar? Yes, you cannot, de you cannot derive common ancestry for that because they're functional. But the amino acid sequence is not functional. You can have any, you can have a huge number of amino acid sequences, right? Now, what's the problem? You know, Sabor says it's based on probabilistic reasoning. That is not even a serious objection because you have to say, what are the probabilities, right? I mean, if you say this thing has one in two chance and this thing has one in a zillion chance, they're not the same, right? Okay. Hey, hey, let me finish the point. Let me finish the point. Right. So, what is the probability? This was done. They calculated the probability of this pattern happening if evolution is not true. And what they said was, the probability of that happening if evolution is not true is 1 times 10 to the power 93. So when he says it's based Which off probabilistic... more than there are atoms in the universe. More than the number of atoms in the universe, right? So when he says it's based off probabilistic reasoning, that's not even a okay, serious so, objection so, 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 because so, so, the, the size of those okay, probabilities so, is so, so big, so, you'd have to be crazy not to oh, think that oh, that's oh, true. Okay, okay, so tell me this. Yeah. Since you're saying, let's go by probabilities, the first point which I want to um, highlight here is earlier you were speaking about it being a fact, it being true, and now at least we've evolved in the sense that we're now speaking about a probabilistic framework and we're speaking about assumptions. So now let's go to disputes. No, 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 no. Okay, hang on, hang on. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't interrupt you for almost okay. like five minutes. All right. oh, sorry, so sorry. let me just deal with some points. So the first point is this. Earlier in the conversation, and we have the video here, you weren't speaking about actual probabilities. You were saying it's true, overwhelming evidence, blah de blah de blah. Okay, now we've got to a point where you're now speaking about a probabilistic framework and you are admitting homology because when you're speaking about look at this and look at this and look therefore it's similar you are basically accepting homology as an assumption within that now when you take a particular quote and you say look you have this particular sequence and you have this particular sequence and the chances of these sequences being um, uh, converging uh, randomly is this I want to ask you some questions about this because I'm pretty sure you are clueless about this. What's the null hypothesis here? The null hypothesis would be the amino acid sequences would be randomly distributed. So aha! Aha! Uh -huh. here's, the, here's the point. And this just goes to show how ignorant people like him are. Null hypothesis is that you will have randomness. Why the hell would you have that as a null hypothesis? Because anything is better than that anything what are you talking so about point, wait, wait 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 hang on a second your null hypothesis if it's yeah. randomness and you have something which is similar anything is going to be better than this okay all right you're not getting it let me okay the null hypothesis here well, okay so the hypothesis is that um, humans and chimps will have a, a more similar amino acid sequence than humans and dogs. And humans and dogs will have a more similar amino acid sequences than humans and fish. Wait, wait. And humans and fish will have a more similar amino acid sequence than humans and yeast. Because which is what we observe. Which is right? why... Which, the normal wait, hypothesis wait, wait, I, is that there's no relationship you, you, between you the spoke, amino acid You've spoken for quite a while, let me okay, speak now. So, so wait, 
Let's not speak about dogs and fish. Let's stick to the initial point, which is about the null hypothesis being a random. Yeah. Okay. I want you to tell me firstly this. Why is it random? First point. Secondly, when it comes to two things being anatomically similar, which idiot would come up with an idea that their genetics would not also be similar rather than being random? Okay, all right, first, first question first, right? What kind of a thinking is that? That chimp looks similar anatomically to that human compared to that, yeah. those two birds. So I'm going to assume anatomically they're similar, but the null hypothesis when I'm using the assumption of homology is that this one okay. is going to be random. You, you haven't that makes absolutely no point. So boy, you, you haven't made, understood the go, point go, at all. One okay. person at a time. Okay, you, you haven't understood the point. Right, okay. So let's suppose you look at humans, you look at chimps, you say they're anatomically similar. So you might say, okay, that might lead me to the hypothesis that they share common ancestors, more recent common ancestry than humans and dogs, right? Then you look at things like the amino acid functional redundancies and you see does the data confirm the hypothesis or disconfirm the hypothesis. Now, Sabor asked about randomness. If it's the case, there's no reason if evolution is false why the relationships couldn't be entirely random. There's no reason for those amino acid sequences to be highly similar if evolution is false. They look similar, okay. so why wouldn't they be? Well, uh, because made, you've missed, that's where you've missed everything. the whole point. Amino yes, acid, I'll tell you, you didn't understand at all, right? It, because if you change the amino acid sequence, you get the same functional protein. That's why, Sabor, that is the whole point. And that is why the leading scientists in the field say this is spectacular evidence, okay? Right. You can agree so with him, but it doesn't right. add. Okay, okay. Look, truth is not based on consensus, yeah? Let me just no, make no, a... No, hang on, hang on. Let me, no, I want to address one other point that, that you made. I want to address another point. Okay, wait, 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 hang on. Okay. Science, wait, wait. So, okay, can I just... I, I, ha I have something talking on the right. Okay. Wait, one second, yeah? Okay. Let me someone. Just, let's not call him a thing, someone. Okay. That would be nice. Thank you. Well, actually, according to your worldview, it's all matter anyway, so it doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that we're not people. Okay. No, people, pe people identity makes no sense under atheism. Okay. okay. He is happy with that. Okay, fine. He's happy. Okay. Let me address the point you said about probability. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Hang on. I'm addressing no, no, your point. You made that point. I haven't had a chance to respond. Okay, sure. Okay. But he said, he said, he said, right, that it's not a fact because it's probabilistic. That is a ludicrous thing to say. And he's, he, he's contradicting himself. He's contradicting himself. Let me give you a quote that Sabor actually said on his video. Okay, he said on his video about hidden assumptions. All right, let me see if I can dig up the quote. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec, let's find it here. Right, let's get the quote. All right, he said, now he gives an example of a crime, a crime being committed, a, a criminal TV show, and he says this. He says, finally, near the end of the show, they discovered the crucial piece of information that was missing. They have DNA of the intruder who broke into the house and committed the murder, right? Program over. We know for certain that the person committed the murder because we have the key piece of information. That is the level of certainty that Darwinists want us to have when it comes to human chimp ancestry. Like, it's a done deal, guys. So that's a direct quote from Sabor, okay? Right now. Wait, hang on. Hang, hang on. Let me finish your point. I agree with that. Let me finish your point, please. Sir. But why? Why does that? Why let does that point, point undermine what I've said? Let me finish your point. I'll tell you why it does. Because when you get DNA evidence on a crime, what actually happens is they give you what's called the match probability. It's probabilistic. They say the chances of the DNA matching and the criteria in forensics is one in a billion. They say, okay, if it's one in a billion or more then it's a match, the DNA is... That sure, person. but what's the right? null hypothesis here? So it's still here? probabilistic, it's still probabilistic. You can't say because it's probabilistic it's not a fact, okay? This is what happens in all of science. So if Sabor's going to reject evolution, he has to reject pretty much wait, all wait, of wait, science. Wait, 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 hang, so on. When, hang, when, on. hang on, let me finish. I never said I reject evolution. Right, right. You reject human chip common ancestry. No, yes, you I do, do right? but I don't right, reject so evolution, there's a difference. That's, a, that's not the point we're debating, Sabor, is no, it? No, but you said I reject evolution, which I don't. Well, you reject human chimp common ancestry. 
That is the point, right? And you said that it's a problem that is based on probability. You, you, you do, you do understand right? where we are. But, but in science in general, this is what we do. When the Higgs was discovered, when the Higgs was discovered, they said, okay, we've got five sigma certainty. What does that mean? It means that when we collect the data, we say the chances of that data happening by, by pure chance are one in three and a half million. That's what five sigma means. And that in physics is considered a discovery. We've done it, right? We've got enough data. There's all of knowledge, all of human knowledge has uncertainty about it, right? All of human knowledge. So whether it's a philosophical argument, whether it's uh, physical theory, whatever, Every, there's always some a certain level of uncertainty. In a criminal trial, you don't ask someone to be proven beyond all doubt, but beyond all reasonable doubt, and they're different. Sure. Because the point, they get to a point where the level of uncertainty, whilst not zero, is so low that it'd be completely and utterly unreasonable not to follow through on the evidence that you have. And if you get a probability, like something like 1 times 10 to the power 93, the level of uncertainty on that is so low that you might, you call it a fact. That's the right thing to do. Okay, so... That's why I Wait, wait, one sec. If I make up a hypothesis, which is this, I'm going to walk down that road, and when I'm going to walk down that road, hypothesis that I have is that what's the probability of me being hit by lightning in comparison to another null hypothesis? And the null hypothesis is the hypothesis that as I'm walking down that road, I get mugged by Lady Gaga, then Madonna comes and gives me a punch in the face, and then birds come and pluck at me and they fly away. According to that, according to that ridiculous null hypothesis, the probability of me being hit by lightning is very, very high. So what Phil's done here is a very fantastic thing, which is this. He said that this probability is so improbable that this is going to be the result. He didn't tell us the null hypothesis. So I said to him, what's the null hypothesis? He said random. And then I asked him a follow up question. If two things look similar, why would you assume that when you look at their genetics, there's going to be randomness as a null hypothesis? So those probabilities that he's coming up with are meaningless. Two, when it comes to his earlier point that he made about Elliot Sober, Elliot Sober is a philosopher of biology and he admits, like all philosophers of biology admit, and maybe Phil he's supposed to have some sort of contact with scientists, maybe you can bring to me a philosopher of science or an evolutionary biologist who is willing to say, because he's going to be one in a million, who's willing to say scientists don't begin off with the assumption of homology or that science doesn't begin with a hypothesis, which it actually does. Now, what Phil believes, and this is his deeply held belief, that prior, prior to Darwin, and even up till um, recently, before we had genetics, all we had was human chimp similarity, right? Just them looking anatomically similar. Genetics did something amazing. That's what he believes. Now, I want to ask Phil. It's not just genetics, it's also the fossil record as well. Fine, but we've only spoken about genetics now. Now, Phil, I want to ask him in front of everyone. Does he believe genetics changed the conversation on homology? Well, what I believe is that genetics gave, as, as the paper in Nature said, spectacular confirmation of human chimp common ancestry. Did That's it? not me speaking, that is the chimpanzee no. genome consortium speaking. That was Based on the nature. assumption right. of homology, Shabur, based on the null many, hypothesis of randomness. Okay, what are you talking about? When you look at similarities... It's based off of the evidence. That's what you fail to understand. And evidence... What Sabor is trying to say is that we start off with an assumption of homology and that's all we got. No. Yep. No. What we have is testable hypotheses, falsifiable hypotheses, right? That we then go and collect the data and then the data will either falsify that assumption or confirm it. Okay. But what the data does is spectacularly confirm it. Like in, right? like, like in, like in, like in, like in human and similarity, like in human 
uh, peak no, similarity, no, no, like no, in no. human because pro similarity. Thought, let's suppose this. Let's suppose you thought, and I don't agree that humans and ants are the most similar. Sociologically, sociologically. they I are. I don't agree with that, right? But let's suppose they are. Let's suppose it's true. Let's suppose it's true. Okay. Then it's what we can do, we can look for other supporting evidence to see is it true that humans and ants share the most recent common ancestor. We can look at other forms of using evidence, the assumption right? of homology. We can look at other forms of evidence and test it. So we could look at the genetics between humans and ants and see does it come back confirming that hypothesis or disconfirming it. Okay. Right. And what it would do is disconfirm it. No, it wouldn't. Right. And also we can look at the fossil evidence. Okay. That would Wait, also let's stick to it. genetics because that's what's being got. Forget fossil. Right, we can so deal we with can all that later. What piece of evidence? What piece of evidence can challenge the assumption of homology in genetics? I want you to give me any piece of evidence. Easy. Go on. Easy, easy, easy. Right? If if the amino acid sequences between species did not follow the evolutionary phylogenetic branchings, then that would disprove it. But hang on, that's assuming that similarities is due to common ancestry. No, it isn't. So what's it assuming? Okay, it's assuming it's assuming that if there are common ancestry, homology. Then, then he just says I, he says there's no assumption. Then he says he assumes. No, no, I'm saying okay. Let if I misspoke, I'll correct myself. Okay. Here is what we do. We look at data and see can it confirm a particular hypothesis, right? Or is the null hypothesis confirmed? I mean, in every case. And the null hypothesis is randomness, right? Yeah. So, so which, what? Which is just as likely as me walking down there and getting no, punched by Lady Gaga no, and birds coming no and eating support. me away. No support. That's, That's where random. You've misunderstood it. That's where you've misunderstood it. Okay. You, you've completely got things. What I want down. to know is no, when you gave let, us let that. Me, let me respond. Let me respond. Right? Sure. Okay. 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 What you're saying is that, is that if you look at the amino acid sequences, they, they, you're, what are you saying? They have to be similar? No. Then what? What, what are you I'm saying, saying is, about the okay. Acid let me, let me put up my problem with what you were saying earlier. Okay. You were saying, look at this sequence. Look at this sequence. The chances of this sequence being this uh, similar based on the null hypothesis of randomness is this number and that number may be 0.0000001% which is more than the number of atoms in the universe or whatever. What I'm saying is why didn't you initially point out what the null hypothesis was when you were giving what us that piece? Does it make? What, one second, I'm point, dealing with it. The difference it makes is that you're telling us the entire story. You're not just giving us a part of the story. And then when I asked you, why the hell would someone make an assumption of a null hypothesis being randomness? You haven't given a good enough answer. When, why, they, why, when why we actually have, answer? when we That's actually like have, wait one second. When we actually have good anecdotal evidence that if anything, the genetics should be similar because the anatomy is similar. No, that's completely wrong. You totally misunderstood. It's nothing to do with the similarity in the anatomy. This is the battery. Okay, hang on one second. Right, this is what Sabor just fundamentally doesn't understand about this argument, right? It's nothing to do with the anatomy, right? You can, what we've proven is that you can have a completely different amino acid sequence and the same functional protein. This is the whole point. It does not, yeah, what he's saying is, oh look, humans and chimps have got similar anatomy, so of course they've got similar amino acid sequences. And that's just wrong. Why? Right? I'll tell you why. Because if you take out the amino acid sequence, if you take out the protein from, let's say, yeast, right, and put the human protein in there, the function of the, of the cytochrome C is unchanged. So you can have any amino acid sequence you like, right, and you will still have the same functional protein. Therefore, 
right? It doesn't mean, you can't conclude that the amino acid sequences would be similar based off anatomy. You cannot conclude that. That is false. No, that's right? not true. It is completely and utterly no, 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 false. It's not, it's not, right? Okay, so let me, let me explain why you're wrong here. When somebody is making a comparison between two different types of, say, sequences. Yeah. Now, if two things look similar, then why would somebody make the null hypothesis randomness unless you wanted to reconfirm what you already knew? Now, the issue here is this. Everything we've spoken about so far is based upon genetics. You believe genetics is decisive evidence for human chimpanzee history, yes or no? Yeah, I believe that and so do the okay. authors of the chimpanzee okay. Okay. Sequence, okay. Okay. sequence paper, I'm not just me, right? Sure, fine, fine. Right, this okay. is what, okay. this, fine. Is, this fine. is a broad consensus fine. in science. In fact, fine. Scott, One let me challenge you. Can you show me any papers in a, in a journal as nearly high impact as nature that say humans and chimps don't share a common ancestor? Can you quote me even one paper? I already I told you based on can the assumption of homology, that is, that is a hypothesis, Sorry, that is an... the paper? Wait, hang on. Which paper know. was it? Okay, wait, well, relax, relax, we've we got time. You know... I don't, I have to go in about 20 minutes from now. Okay, that's fine, no problem. You're gonna, okay. You've been refuted enough, but I'm going to make one last point. I'm going to make one last point. You have been refuted at all, zero refutation. Okay, wait, wait one second. Okay. Let me refute both of you at the same time, because he's been talking a lot. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. All this time he's been speaking about genetics, and I've been bringing him back to the idea of homology and that genetics adds nothing new to the assumption of homology and nothing new to the evidence of human chimp ancestry being true literally because this is a philosophical problem not a scientific problem which can be resolved by data. The yeast evidence is clear evidence. It is. Right? It is. All he's been speaking about is genetics. Now I want to ask him one particular question. Do you think genetics has added anything new to the philosophical paradox of homology and homoplasy? What I think is that the genetic evidence confirms homologous relationships between humans and chimps. Okay, let me That's ask again because he didn't answer. At the time of Erasmus Darwin, Erasmus Darwin believed in human primate ancestry based on the assumption of homology. So did, so did John Baptiste Lamarck. So did the ancient Hindu philosophers based on the assumption of homology. Genetics has added nothing new to this conversation. You say rubbish, what do you say? I would say that it's... I, here's not what, it's not what I say. Just, I'm, I'm Your nobody. interpretation of what I'm they nobody, say. I'm nobody, okay? I know that. Right? Okay, thanks. Okay, what, who is not nobody is the chimpanzee Genome Consortium. They are not nobody, they are the top experts in this field. Okay, and it's not just one author, this is a consortium of all the leading genomic institutes in the world. And, and what they say is that the genetic evidence spectacularly confirms common ancestry. Right, now you said it's all about wait, genetics, wait, wait, wait. so I'm going to give you some fossil wait, evidence. Wait, 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 wait one, okay. second, one second, one second. No, no, we're not going to move on from that point. Why not? They are saying, the they are saying this is evidence based upon their assumption of homology, no, if the, the null hypothesis is randomness like you admitted, which is a self-confirming uh, uh, theory. No, right. If you have, it, by definition, if you've got a null hypothesis and a hypothesis, and they're different data, null hypothesis by definition it's not self-confirming, is it? Because you've got a null hypothesis. Yeah, but if the null hypothesis... So that makes no wait, wait, sense at if, all. If the null hypothesis is... That doesn't make if, any sense at all. If the null hypothesis is absolutely ridiculous, like me walking down there and getting mobbed, by Lady Gaga and okay, birds eating away at me. Ridiculous. Anything in comparison is going to be highly likely in probability. You now, say it's ridiculous now, because you what don't I want to understand do, anything at all about it. Okay, genetics. now, here's the thing. All this time, all this time, Phil has been bringing up the idea of genetics. All right, I'll switch, and, to, I'll switch, I'll and switch to fossils. And we will fine. And, 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 okay. Before we go to fossils, let me put the final nail in his coffin. There's no nail in anybody's coffin except your own. Okay. Jonathan Marks, who is an atheist evolutionary biologist. This is his book, What It Means to Be 98% Chimpanzee. Other species appear to grieve, but none weep as humans do. 
and certainly not over imaginary events like those in Les Miserables or Love Story. What does genetics have to say about all of this? Nothing, full stop. Sameness, otherness is a philosophical paradox that is not resolved by argument. Sorry, that is resolved by argument, not by data. Genetic data tells us precisely what we already knew, that humans are both similar and very different from the great apes. The exact same point I've been making all this time, except I wanted to bring out the quote right at the end when he's dug himself in a very dark, deep place. Genetics adds nothing new to the ancient paradox of similarity and this similarity. Okay, there's nothing in what he quoted, nothing at all, that gives any evidence against human chimp common ancestry. What that author is saying is that humans and chimps have differences. No one's disputing that. So that is Wait, hang on. That is what we call a strong hang on, man. Hang on. Sabor, I didn't interrupt you there. Ha I no, no, I am going to interrupt you because no, you have I very little time you. and I want to make sure you refute it no, well no, enough. No, 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 yeah. Okay. No. Wait, one you second. One second, one second. He never hang said. on a second. He, hang on a okay. second. We have a good crowd here. How many people think that this guy understood what that quote actually said? Oh, I thought you said it wasn't decided by popularity vote. Okay, before. it's not, but according to your friend, so, it is. So I'm going to go well, with your friend. Well, he's not my friend. I've never met him before. <laughs> well, he's supporting you. You should be his friend. He's, <laughs> that means you're... Okay, wait, one second, one second, one second. You're, second. you're, you're distracting. Well, well, one this second. is a pure distraction. Okay, wait, one we second. We don't decide this. Wait, one second, one second, one second. Okay. I gave him a very direct quote, which is, this whole time, Phil is speaking about genetics as if genetics has added anything new to the ancient problem of homology and homoplasy, to the ancient paradox. And he dug himself a deep hole by repeatedly speaking about genetics. And in that quote, Jonathan Marx basically says, genetics adds nothing new to this philosophical paradox, which is, which is resolved by argument, not by genetic data. And what does he go on to say? He says, yeah, of course, he's saying we are different to great apes. Right. That's not what the quote says. It, well, and doesn't, the, pro and sorry, the problem is this. Quote, and the problem the is this. The quote says this very clearly. And the thing is, Phil comes to the park regularly. I come to the park regularly. We're filming this. The quote, if you want to say I quote mind, no problem. Go and research it and find me how I quote mind it, how I took it out of its context. But very clearly, it says this homology, homoplasy, the philosophical paradox which existed before Darwin is not resolved by genetics, it's resolved by argument. So genetics adds, according to Jonathan Marx, an atheist evolutionary biologist, nothing new. Okay, so what is completely misquoting it, right? Because okay, wait, wait, hang on a second. If I'm misquoting it, what did I quote? Okay, one second, okay, okay. one second. Sure, no, sorry, can I respond? Wait, 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 one second. No, no, no one second. Respond, you can respond, but first you said, I misquoted him. I'm asking you, what was the quote? Were you even listening? You, yeah, of course, I was listening. Go on, what's the what quote? You said, what you said was that humans and chimps are different, right? That they have significant dissimilarities, okay? That's what the quote basically said, right? And that has nothing to do nope. with the question. Was that the quote? Was no, that, there was nothing that to was do not with the, the question quote. Ten, all right. Okay, Support. you seem like an bias, uh, sorry, an uh, objective object over here. So tell us this, was that what I said? I watched this in the last section because it was too, too much double for you. I don't, I've stopped listening to you about two minutes ago. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Okay, can I... No, wait, wait, one second, one let second. Let me finish. If you're, gonna, uh, if you're not going to let me finish, I'm going to walk away. Okay? okay, oh, okay. When someone loses, they want to walk away, so I'm going to let him finish. Go on, talk. Okay, fine. Right, okay. Whether how similar or dissimilar humans and chimps are is not the question for the debate. So he talks, he quotes this guy Jonathan Marx, right, and he says, "Oh, you know, 
humans do this, chimps don't do that. That is completely and utterly irrelevant to the question of whether humans and chimps share a common ancestor. No one is claiming that humans and chimps are identical. That is not the claim. So Sabor's argument is a total and utter straw man. The question is, do humans and chimps share a common ancestor? Not, are humans and chimps identical? Or how different are humans and chimps in terms of their behaviours? We are not claiming humans and chimps are identical. We are not claiming that the genetic evidence tells us exactly how similar we are to chimps in terms of our behaviours. No. What we're saying the genetic evidence does is tell us that humans and chimps share a common ancestor. And I've asked him for even one paper in a, in a high impact journal like Nature that I quoted that, that says the opposite conclusion. And he cannot quote even one. Well, what, what even conclusion? One, right? What conclusion? That humans and chimps share a common ancestor. No, they all, they all have that conclusion based upon the assumption of homology. It's based off of the data. And the data is looked at basing... The so have you got any data that goes the other way? Wait, wait, have you got any data that goes wait, the wait, other way? On, wait, hang on, hang on one second. For the data to go the other way, I need a rival null hypothesis. Right. But the null hypothesis which you gave is that of randomness. Anything is going to be better than randomness. So now, give me, give me another one second, one, one, me, one second. Give me, give me some data. Give me now, a what, paper. Wait, wait, give me a paper. But I didn't give you a paper. I gave you an evolutionary biologist who's describing which the way the field works. Which you misquoted. Ha, okay, if I misquoted him, then tell me this. What book did I misquote him from? Elliot Sober was evolution. No, um, the book is what it means to be 98% chimpanzee. Okay, 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 okay. Right? Fine. You even got the book wrong. I, I, now, let no, me. No, 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 that was a different quote. Was yes, a different so quote. you weren't listening. No, we moved on since you've done so many misquotes, Sabor. It's hard to know which one you are And And about. wait, wait. For you to say I've misquoted, you need to give evidence. I, okay, but here's the, here's the point. What atheists do is this. You misquoted. But what they do themselves is look at this amazing piece of evidence. Look at this amazing piece of evidence. And when I ask him, what's the null hypothesis? Uh, it's randomness. Hang on a second. If you're going to give us evidence, which is supposed to be conclusive, you are misquoting when you don't give the entire story, when you don't explain what the null hypothesis is and whether that null hypothesis is actually justified. Now, what he said, what Jonathan Marks said, is but that I'm misquoting him, but he himself has never read that book. And he, I have read that book. You've read this book? Yep. Okay, so tell me yep. in this book, what does Jonathan Marks say genetics has done to the conversation about homology. Okay, my, I, it's a long time since I read that book, but my recollection was that what he was saying was that the, the difference between humans and chimps is more than simply um, the one or two percent quoted, you know, 98% similar or 99% similar or 96%. That actually, that what created the difference between humans and chimps was regulatory changes in how the growth factors in humans uh, human neocortex. Okay, right? you haven't read the book, have you? I have. Okay, so read this part. Okay, fine. Okay. Other species appear to agree. Okay, we've read this. Already. Wait, 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 wait. Read it. Okay, okay, okay. Other species appear to agree, but none we as humans do. And certainly not imaginary events like those in Les Miserables Love Song. What does genetics have to say about all this? Nothing. Right? Nothing. But that's not, but that's not the question. That is not the question, Sabor. Well, You're quoting this completely out of context. Wait, wait, carry on. Don't, finish, don't, finish, the the quote, finish the quote, finish the quote, finish the quote. Okay. Same as otherness is a philosophical paradox is resolved by argument, not by data. Genetic data tells precisely what we already knew. The humans apes are very similar to a different from great apes. But that's completely irrelevant. And that's what I've been saying for the no, last no, no, two no, Sibor. hours. Sibor, no, no, right, I've got to respond to this. I've got to respond to this. Sure. Right? Because what he's saying is, how similar are humans and chimps? Do they have emotions? Do they weep at Les Miserables? Do, you know, that is not the question that we're asking. Humans and chimps could be very, very different at an emotional level, right? We, we in evolution, what we say is that humans have a, a brain that's, like, say, 1,400 cc's. Chimps is only about, I don't know, 300, 400 cc's. So what there was was a very large increase in the neocortex of the human, right? And Did that, anyone that, hear that in the court? And that, and that, Right, and that quote captures the whole book, does it, Sabor? No, 
It doesn't, and you clearly haven't read it, so you don't know what the other parts are. So I here's the thing. It. Does he say, does that, he say wait, wait, one that, second. that, that the, humans and chimps differed because of acceleration in the growth factors of the neocortex genes? Yes or no? I can't think of that. He maybe does he say said, that. Maybe he, he said does it. does say that. Okay, but he even if he does that. say that, that's irrelevant to this point. The point I'm making here is I let Phil speak about genetics, 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 and here you have an evolutionary biologist saying the philosophical paradox is not resolved by genetic data and sameness otherness is a philosophical paradox that is not resolved that's resolved by argument not by data genetic data tells us precisely what we already knew that humans are both okay. similar and very different to great apes not about so, the question of so genetics doesn't add genetics doesn't add anything different to what erasmus that can well, nothing that's not true that's, that's not true, true. Wait, wait, no it is it's it completely it's true. false it's, it's actually true all right i'll tell you so, why it's true. so how would it be one second one second okay. let me answer let me answer yeah the book is science and human origins this is um written by th these are christian this is a book yes well no we want a scientific paper so or not wait, 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 hang on anyone could publish anything wait, in a wait, book phil, that's phil, not peer phil, review phil, phil. i want something in a phil Journal. Phil, one second. Phil, one second. One second. Sorry, that's irrelevant. I'm not dealing with this point. I'm dealing with the earlier point of the Italian ape. Yeah, I want a right. reference in a proper peer review journal. What, the existence of this ape? And that it was in Italy and that it's 10 million years old and that it's bipedal. And I want it in a proper peer review journal, not in a book. Wait, hang on. Then I have to actually go to the page. All right, go carry on. You need. Right, he can't find it. No surprise. Well, wait, hang okay. on a second, hang on a second. If I did find it, or if I didn't actually find it, it wouldn't make a difference to my overall argument which I'm actually making, and which you've admitted, that if there is this Italian ape, which is 10 million years old, which is fully bipedal, this is a recalcitrant fact, but this does not, and this reconfirms something I said earlier, this does not falsify human chimpanzee history because nothing can. Well, okay, he says nothing can falsify human chimp magic. Because of methodological okay, naturalism okay, okay, and okay. homology. Support. Support. Okay, all right, let me just address that point, right? First off, it's, as we established, it's nothing to do with methodological naturalism. Because as we could have a perfectly naturalistic explanation for human origins that's nothing to do with evolution. You could, you could be someone that believes in spontaneous creation, and people were. Aristotle believes in spontaneous creation. Um, the ancient, many other ancient Greeks, I think it was Anaxagoras, believed in it. Okay, so it does, it's, it's nothing from naturalism that says that humans and chimps have to share a common ancestor. And, and human and chimps' common ancestry is falsifiable. Of course, any one piece of evidence, you know, has to be taken in the context of all the evidence, right? So it's true that you know you you have to look at all the evidence. Okay, multiple lines of evidence. If you just found one thing. Of course, you have to look at the broad picture, okay? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm doing call a friend. Okay, fine, <laughs> fine, fine. Yeah, I mean, we've been going for two hours. No, wait, wait, wait. I, I, need, I need to give you this reference first. Okay, okay. It was in fine. Africa, I believe. Right, okay, years. now, the point is, if it were the case, if it were the case that we found that, going back to my original example. Sam Rowe, how are you doing? Human, Bro, I need a quick human, favor. Um, Hello? The, the nano P I need a quick favor. You know that is, Italian uh, ape that we were speaking about, which was discovered would, in southern Italy? Falsified what was it called? Evolution, right? If we found that humans and yeah, chimps... Which was fully bipedal. Their amino acid sequence... Their amino uh, can acid you WhatsApp me the name? And just WhatsApp me um, where they... Uh, like some these, reference where they discovered it. That would falsify it. evolution. If that graph... Okay. I need an ASAP kind of debating an atheist right now. That, if that graph didn't okay. have that okay. pattern, that would go okay. against Fine. human evolution, right? Okay, there, there, there's, there's, Let me give you another test, right? Hello. If humans and chimps share a common ancestor, right, then um, what we should find is that the genetic um, diversity in human populations should be highest at the center of origin. This is called Vavilov's theory. This is widely accepted in genetics. The origin center is where you have the highest genetic diversity. So, so if we found, so what we, we could look at different ethnicities, Europeans, Eskimos, Native Americans, Aboriginals, whoever, 
And if evolution is true, sub-Saharan Africans should have the highest genetic diversity. If it turned out that Eskimos had the highest genetic diversity, that would be evidence against human chimp common ancestry. That would be evidence against human Wait, wait, wait. Right? wait, now, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Now, that's a non sequitur. Out, no, it isn't a that's non That's a total non sequitur. You're assuming, and this is a very racist thing, by the way, that East Africa is where you have the great apes and that's where the black people are. No, so, that's where you have the fossils. Wait, wait, hang on. It's not racist hang, ha as It all. is racist, and I'll tell you why. How is it racist? I'll tell you why. Because we do actually have fossils which are also in other parts of Asia, such as China, which could also be interpreted as the beginning of human beings. Now, your argument no, is a non sequitur. You're wrong. Okay. The you, oldest, the wait, oldest wait, hominid fossils hang, wait, are all wait, in East Africa. You made your point. You made your They're point. All South Saharan Africa. Well, and that's where well, then we should find no, the highest genetic the oldest, diversity. The oldest fossil of uh, recently that discovered of a human being is actually in Morocco. North of Africa. A human being? Yes. That's not what we're talking about. Yes. We're talking about the oldest hominid fossils, where Australopithecus is. Yes. Where or, or, or no, it is. Yes. Where, but, uh, where all these, there's nothing to no, do with where no, but you're assuming, the oldest modern human you're, is. You're, that's you're, just you're, ridiculous. You're support. assuming those are human ancestors. Well, no, if they are, if that's where human ancestry is, then we can confirm it with another piece of evidence. That's the point. This is what you completely so give uh, me, misunderstand okay, every time. So, so, you say, oh, we're just assuming this, we're just assuming this, we're just assuming this. Okay. But the whole point is the data can confirm or deny the assumptions. Wait, wait, hang right? on, hang on. And the data overwhelmingly confirms it. Okay, this Phil, is the whole Phil, point. Phil, 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 here's the thing. The fossils which are found in East Africa, those fossils, yeah. none of them, and here's the point which I'm making, have been proven to be human chim human uh, human ancestors. Those you those totally fossils. Wait, 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 hang on a second. Every single one of those fossils that's been discovered, those discoveries are based on the assumption of homology, and the assumption which is actually made. And here's the point. Here's the point. Look, I'm going to make an. All right, all right, we're going to no, wrap no, no. up here. Let me. Let, no, no, let, let, we're going to wrap up. Well, go. Sir, I'm, okay. I'm doing one person at a time. I'll, I'll speak to you next. Lucy is assumed to be a human chimp ancestor. It's, it's supposed to be our recent sort of, if you like, grandmother, because she was discovered in she was discovered in in Africa, and she was supposed to be bipedal. Now, I want you to. All I, the evidence I, says it's bipedal. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Why didn't researchers use the ape which is discovered in southern Italy, which is 10 million years old, 7 million years older, as a human chimp ancestor? You keep quoting this because, ape and you haven't given a reference because, for it. Okay, wait, it's You've coming. I actually nothing. rang a friend for it. One I second. Know, I, I, work, I work with right? some researchers. Oh, wait, it just came in. Good timing. It's called Orthrolopithecus bambuli. And here it is. Journal of Human Evolution. So the point which I was making stands, if you look at any fossil, that fossil you are based, you're using that fossil and you're basing it on an assumption of homology and you're saying that this is a human chimp ancestor. But that assumption is not reconfirmed by you looking at similarities. Because that argument would be like this. That would be like similarities are due to common descent. Similarities exist. Therefore, similarities are due to common descent. But that would actually be circular reasoning. Why didn't these researchers use the ape which was discovered in Italy, which was a fully bipedial ape, and use that as a human chimpanzee ancestor? Because Darwin and the people prior to him, they were actually racist and they wanted to show that the black person is much closer to the other primates than the Caucasian people. So they didn't use the ape in southern Italy, which is 10 million years old, fully bipedal. Rather, they used an ape okay. which was 3 million right. years old. One second. 3 million years old, which was in southern Africa. And here's the point. When you believe a theory is true, anything is evidence. Darwin believed, and he said this in The Descent of Man, that African people they actually, some of them, they have feet which are uh, ha, uh, um, feet which are like this, which actually have opposable thumbs, which is why black people are good at climbing trees. Now, any black people here, sir, do you have any relatives in Africa who have feet which are like this? Do you know of any African which has feet like this? Now, why did Darwin describe these Africans who have feet like this? Because 
he has an idea in his head which he believes to be true, which is his actual theory. So because he believes it to be true, the evidence that he sees, anything could actually be evidence. Also, when Darwin went to South America, he did the same thing with the South Americans because he believed the white race, the Caucasian race was the highest. So when he described the Fujian people, he said these were people that used to grunt, they could hardly speak. Yet researchers, when they studied those same people around 30 years before Darwin, they said this is a sophisticated society which have a language of about 30,000 words. So Darwin, he already believed his theory to be true. So anything was actually evidence. Now, okay, now, now the, the thing, the last point which I want to make is this. The, the, no, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wasn't a racist. The Islamic civilization wasn't racist. You can't say Darwin, really? so why did Darwin, you, why did you Darwin. Darwin so can you pull da, that da, back da, up? Can you pull that thing back up, please? For Islamic slavery? Wait, hang on. Africa. Hang on. Right? Okay, that's okay. Wait. No, give me back. Give okay. me back. Give me back. Okay. Okay. But no, no, I need, so, I need to respond. So, no, so, so, right. Any fossil which he brings up is the same as the genetic evidence, the same as the anatomical evidence is still based on the assumption okay, no, of homology, no, 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 no. which by the way, and this, this thing Phil has not addressed at all. He has not addressed this point at all, which is homology is a necessary condition to establish human chip ancestry. It's not sufficient to, for it to even remotely be sufficient. You need a mechanism, a mechanism of natural selection or any other mechanism. And this whole time, he did not speak even the smallest amount about the mechanism. Without the mechanism, at best, all you have is a story. Okay, okay. Let, 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 me, let me read you the paper that Sabor thinks is evidence of uh, uh, bipedal ape. This is what the paper he just gave me says. No, no, no. I okay. gave you the paper with the okay, name okay, of the actual okay, fossil. Okay, 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 okay. Results, okay, okay. Results further show that the sacrum exhibits relatively small uh, pezzerogaphysial articular facet surface areas and mediolaterally narrow also compared with modern humans indicating that the morphology of Oreo uh, Pithecus sacrum is incompatible with the functional demands of her habitual bipedal stance and locomotion. The oropithecal lumbosal region does not exhibit adaptations for habitual bipedal locomotion. So your no, no, own no. paper contradicts you. No, no, no. Yes, it does. Right now, hang on. You well, well, hang on. And hang I can interrupt. Hang. I'm gonna. I gotta respond. Go on. Okay, and we've got to wrap up because we've been here more than two no. hours. Okay. Right. I didn't. Oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, wait. Hang on. This, this, this ape is. Hab I is, didn't interrupt wait, you. Wait, wait. Hang on a second. One second. Before you make your point, let me just make a simple right, point fine, about this. Ape. No, 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 no. This okay. particular ape, this ape, it can walk on two, lose, and it doesn't do that all the time. It also has locomotion. But Lucy was something which they think was transitioning towards actual bipedalism no, or according wrong, to some wrong, according to wrong, some wrong, wait, wait hang on a second hang wrong. on a second according to some wait, wait, hang on hang on no idea what you're talking hang about. on according to some it was fully bipedal whatever it actually is the point which i was actually making is this why would they go with something which is four million years old and not go with something which is 10 million years old because what. they had a previous theory no, of this right and even if even if there, there was no fossil evidence of any hominid, which is what you said earlier about Henry Gee. Even if there was no fossils, human chimp ancestry would still be true, which is yes, what you said earlier. We have independent evidence from No, you don't have independent evidence because it's based on the assumption of homology. From embryology, that we have, yes, it would be true if we had no fossils. Because exactly, that's the point. No. When it comes to the fossil record, all of this is based on the assumption of homology. And there is nothing new that is added to this by genetics or by the fossil record. Now here's the actual point. The point is that no fossil can be proven to be a human chimp ancestor. And, 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 so, so why are you, so why are you, wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Even if there was no fossils, human chimp ancestry would still be believed to be because true by you. Because we have other evidence. No, because we have other no, evidence but at all. the moment what it, what's happening, Phil, is this. It's like whack-a-mole. You deal with something with genetics 
and you, you, you show how that's not an independent line of reasoning, you run off to the fossils. When you deal with that, you run off with something else. So tell me this. Uh, what why? Saying, running off to something else means providing independent evidence. No, but hang on. Saying, how can that be independent evidence when I dealt with genetics? You ran away to the fossil record. And when we're dealing with the fossil record, you're running off to we have other independent evidence. The oh, thing you is, you didn't deal with any of them. Yes, I did. All right, you yes. think you did. You assess you won the debate. No, it's, it's, it's I Phil, I won the debate. Phil. And we'll have to let the people that watch decide. No. Okay? Phil, if for you to come here, you actually wanted to have a formal debate. Yeah. We have to. Yeah. And how long would the formal debate be? Tell me. I don't know, how, however long the QA is. Something like, that, right? Something like this, yeah. We've been here. So, 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 so tell me this. So, so tell me this. Right? Tell me this. And we're going round and round and round in circles. Tell me this. Tell me this. Tell me if my summary of you is wrong. Okay. You began off with is true. It is actually true. Uh -huh. And I began it's off right. with yeah. it is an assumption of homology yeah, which yes. cannot be disproven. And this yeah. is still based on methodological naturalism. Yeah. Still yeah. based on the idea that even if homology was true, uh -huh. it would be a necessary condition for human chimpanzees three, not a sufficient one because you still have to have a mechanism of natural selection which you didn't deal with. In our conversation, it devolved to a point where you admitted the assumption is there, you admitted the assumption is there, but what you're still trying to do is you're still trying to say the assumption is validated based on probabilities. Okay, what I said was that human and chimp common ancestry is a fact and it's a fact because the data overwhelmingly supports it. And that's not just me saying that. This is what the human chimp, the chimp and chimpanzee genome consortium it's not right. said it's not right. in their paper. It's not right. oh, sorry, can you it's not right. Okay. I know what you're okay. saying. So why did right. so, so why why no, do no, philosophers no. of science and you philosophers of biology and evolutionary biologists Elliot Sober, you quoted him as saying that you can't infer common ancestry from similarities. Uh, right? That's not what he says there. Yes, it is what he says. He says you can't say it's a must, it's true. Right. It's, I agree with him, it's not in And not, that's the point I was making. Possible. You're not you, you, it's not must be true because of an assumption of common ancestry. The whole point I'm saying is you don't conclude it because of your assumption of homology, right? You do it because the data confirms it. And I summarize. And I summarize your argument. I summarize your argument, which was similarities are due to common ancestry. Similarities exist. Therefore, common we, ancestry is okay. true. We'll and to, this is circular reasoning which you've been doing throughout these two hours. We're going to have to finish it. Thank you very much. Okay. But, but, you, you, but, but, you, but you do realize your original point, you devolved from it. Before we've discussed it for two and a half hours. People can watch the discussion and then they can make their own. Fucking okay? They can do, but you. But I want you to understand something, right? Support. Look, we're going over the same thing again and again. And again. Fucking Muhammad bin Salman. We're going to leave it here. Fucking okay? do, do you do you think you do you do you think your position has actually changed? Because your position in the beginning and the end was different. No, it hasn't. You've just misunderstood. You've misunderstood. That's all it is. Guys. Okay, okay, but, he, but here's the thing. When we have it's these... when not we, a circular it argument. It is a circular argument. You're saying we start with an assumption of homology and therefore we conclude homology. Now a circular argument is that there's no way out of the circle, right? But in here we have the data. And the data can either confirm or deny the hypothesis, right? And it confirms it. And that's why it's not a circular argument, because the data can easily refute it. And that's what you don't the understand. The, the, the data cannot refute it. Well, we'll have to disagree. Because, because, as we pointed out, and you disagreed with this, we have sociological evidence, which is different. We also have the fact that, even genetically, that we have some things in the human and chimp genome which are different, but nothing, but, evidence, but not, nothing, nothing can says actually... the genes are going to be identical. Wait, wait, that's a stupid, stupid, stupid thing to no, say. No, it's not. Because no one is saying this the human genome and the chimp genome are identical. So the fact that there are some differences is completely irrelevant. Exactly, completely exactly, irrelevant. exactly, because nothing can disconfirm the uh, assumption not of homology. True. Not true. So why does it not I get I right, I will give you I will give you multiple things that could disconfirm it. Go on. Okay. One Nano P8 pseudogene is the oldest of the pseudogenes. If that were true, that would be disconfirming evidence of human chimp. Okay, wh why? Why? Let's deal with that. Why? Why? Because Nano P8 is not in the chimps. 
Okay, right, nano P1, P2, P3, P4, all the way nano P11, they're all in the chips. Okay, perfect, so, perfect, now, perfect, they're in the perfect. Chips. Wait, 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 hang on. We, this is getting dangerous. Wait, we wait, to, okay, just one, no, last, no, one, no, one, no, one, one last thing. No, last no, thing. no, 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 no. We've had uh, many last things. Okay, no, but we're going to have to give it up. Just one you last point, one last point, one last point. Wait, Phil, Phil, one last point. No. Phil, similarity in terms of intelligence perspective, but this doesn't actually challenge human chimpanzees. Phil. Yeah, we finished. You didn't make your point. You made a circular I argument the whole time. You, you just made the same circular argument again and again. We can discuss this again too. The fact of the matter is this. All throughout this conversation, you first did not want to acknowledge homology was an assumption. Then you acknowledged no, it was an assumption. Was then you believed it no. could be ver. Then you believed it could be verified. Said, so in I summary, said, what I began off with, you still haven't challenged, which is similarities is due to common descent. Similarities exist. Therefore, similarities is due to common descent. No, this at best, no, at best, is circular no, reasoning. No, 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 that's completely and I, I don't, I don't see why you're walking away because you wanted to have this debate. We have had the debate. No, but. Phil, Have we not Phil, been Phil, here for two and a half hours? Phil, before? Phil, the Should debate. I be here till next no, Tuesday? No, no, relax, Phil. When we wanted to have you this discussion, you wanted to have a formal discussion. Yes. Yes. You said you had more credentials than Aaron Ra, which I don't know. I don't know how you managed to make that conclusion. I never said but, that. I no, you lied. You lied. You said I only debate people that have professional qualifications in the field. Yeah. Yeah, and I pointed out Aaron Ra doesn't have those qualifications. He does. No, he doesn't. He studied paleontology. He has not got any postgraduate degrees in his subject. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because I asked him. Me and Sir Alan okay, so, had a conversation so, and I Have you studied paleontology? Has, have I? No. Why have you studied in terms of evolutionary biology? I'm not qualified in evolutionary biology. So, the, so where Aaron Ra is because he studied no, paleontology? He is well, I He's more qualified him. than you. I asked, well, okay. I asked him if he had uh, professional qualifications in evolutionary biology and he told me no. It says on his Wikipedia page he studied paleontology. I asked him and he said no. And he's been debating this topic for about 30 years now. Right, so? No, but your, your you point... Know, if it was me versus you, this would be really interesting. But it isn't. It's, it's you, you, it's it's you misrepresenting the scientific community. It's you versus the whole scientific community. No, it's not. It is. Because which scientists... Can you bring me one scientist or scientific paper or a philosopher of science or philosopher of biology who says homology is not an assumption you begin off with? Okay, but Nobody. You're the, points of the question is not what are the starting assumptions. The question is what does that Ah, you agree the starting say? assumptions are there? <laughs> I've already told you, right? The point that we have with the evidence the human if the if the evidence is based on an assumption and the but null the hypothesis evidence, is no. something ridiculous okay, okay. You, you, you and genetics that. adds nothing new to the you're, conversation okay. you're misquoting that the genetics what he was saying was that the genetics adds nothing new to the issue of how similar humans and chimps are that's but not what that's he said not the question. that's not what he the said question is, you're misquoting then, him then, then the, question is, the whole time you're misquoting him got a common ancestor that's, totally different question that's you're misquoting so him totally going to finish it here okay you got to put a line under it okay thank you very much for the debate okay okay one of the issues is this when you have atheists like Phil, like other atheists, they come along and they say, look, this thing is evidence. We have evidence from genetics. We have evidence from anatomy. We have evidence from the fossil record. We have evidence from bioinformatics. Or we have evidence from biochemistry or whatever. But each of those is based on an assumption fundamentally. And that assumption is the assumption of homology. Now, if you want to say it's simply an assumption, that's fine. But if you say that this assumption is actually true, what you're basically doing is you're making a circular argument. You're saying similarities are due to common descent, similarities exist, therefore similarities are due to common descent. And that is pure circular reasoning. Now, if you want to say, look, there is something that can actually challenge it. 
and you want to say, look, we have this probability that's actually here. What is the null hypothesis? What is the thing that you're comparing it with? It's going to be randomness. But where did you come up with the idea that that is going to be actually random? So what he actually did there is he misrepresented what the scientific what the scientific conclusion was by not explaining fully what the null hypothesis was and how they actually came up with that conclusion. And this is one of the fundamental problems where, when it comes to actually atheists. What they actually do is this. They give you a, a picture of the scientific community which is not true. There is not a single philosopher of science, there is not a single philosopher of biology, there is not a single evolutionary biologist that would deny methodological naturalism and that would deny homology as an assumption. And even if, even if homology was not just simply an assumption, even if it could be validated in some way, Homology is a necessary condition for human chimp ancestry, not a sufficient condition. You actually have to have a mechanism because Darwin's theory is not a theory about similarities. It's, a, it's, it's the theory of natural selection, how you can get from a monad to a man, how you can go from A to actually Z. You can't just simply make claims and one of the things which atheists love to do is say you've misquoted this person when they themselves like in this conversation didn't even know what the person actually said and the problem why this exists is because evolutionary biology has been hijacked by people who want to use it as a platform for trying to show why God doesn't exist or atheism is true or this actually undermines the existence of God. When anybody who looks at it from an objective point of view will understand science is uh, based on the problem of uh, science is based on induction and you have the problem of induction. It's a beautiful method which gives us the technology that we have, but it doesn't mean that conclusions that you make based upon it, especially conclusions which are the, about the remote past, you can say these things are true in a certain way. The assumptions are still there and those assumptions cannot be decisively proven through any form of data. Some of these things are philosophical paradoxes like homology and homoplasy and these cannot actually be um, uh, proven by data. Now one of the things which is very, very important and which is why I come to the park is to show that atheists like Phil, they don't actually represent the scientific community and they always give you partial evidence. And we saw clear, clear evidence of that when he gave that statistic, but he didn't explain what the null hypothesis was or what the null hypothesis was actually based upon and tried to actually justify that. And he walked away. Now, somebody watching this may say, well, he has the right to walk away. Actually, anybody has the right to walk away from a debate. But he asked for this debate and he actually wanted to discuss a very deep topic with all these different um, things, whether it's genetics, anatomy or the fossil record or whatever. But he called each one an independent line of evidence. But when one was dealt with, he ran off to another as an independent line of evidence. But that's like whack-a-mole. That's like, look, it's not here, it's here, it's not here, it's here. The fact of the matter is it's nowhere. It's actually based on the assumption of homology and there is no one piece of evidence that you can actually say is decisive evidence of human chimp ancestry. And another thing which in the debate which came up, which I think is very, very important, which we should actually understand is confirmation bias. Darwin actually had a confirmation bias and his confirmation bias was that he believed the African people were closest to the other primates, which is why he believes certain traits about African people which weren't actually true. And Ernst Haeckel, who was a German evolutionary biologist and he was one of the disciples of Darwin and he was also somebody who wrote a book about human chimp ancestry. He had um, a chart that he actually made with different types of human beings with the African black human being being the lowest and being closest to the actual other primates. Now, obviously the highest was the same race that Phil actually is, the Caucasian race. Now when Charles Darwin read that book, he actually said, if I knew that this um, uh, book was going to be published, I would not have published my book, The Descent of Man. So he clearly held those beliefs. Now the atheist who was here, he's going to say, well, everybody was racist back then. You know, this is complete nonsense and I explained that 
Islamically, we, do, we have an ancient tradition which is that all human beings are equal and the only thing that differentiates one human being from another human being is their God consciousness, not their race. So this whole idea that, oh, it's okay if, if he had this confirmation bias because, uh, you know, everybody at the time was racist, that wasn't the actual point. The point is he let his confirmation bias dictate his actual scientific study. And this is the same case in Africa and the same case in actually South America when he actually visited it. Islam is something which cannot be disproven in terms of the existence of God or in terms of human chimp ancestry because of science. And people like Phil actually misrepresent the scientific evidence and misquote or misquote scientists, although they themselves misquote studies, which was why it was exposed today, and misquote and misunderstand what the assumptions actually are. And those assumptions are never conclusions. Those assumptions remain assumptions. He began off with that. It's not an assumption. He admitted it's an assumption. And then he tried to say the assumption is validated to be an actual conclusion. Everything good I have said is from God. Every mistake is from uh, myself. I thank you very much for listening. Assalamu alaikum.